Okay, so thanks so much. Um, I am so pleased to meet all of you in person after having Zoomed with you in our little tiny boxes for so long. Um, I would love to just start by asking each of you to tell us a little bit about the organization that you represent, just to sort of warm us into uh, who you are and um, how you came to be representing that organization for the Legacy Engagement Project. Does anybody want to go first? Hey. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to share space with you. Um, so I come from the Newcomer Center of Peel, and we are a multi-service agency that helps newcomers uh, in integrating into their new community. Sorry, is my mic weird? Test, test. Okay. Um, so yeah, we basically help newcomer families integrate by providing different services and different programs. And I specifically work for Community Connections, and we help establish professional and social networks uh, for youth, for adults and seniors, and just to help them to feel engaged and feel part of the community. And how I got to be part of it is actually my manager just kind of said, hey, there's an opportunity to be part of this. You want to do it? And I, I sent you an email and you said there's one more spot. So I felt like I was meant to be part of this. So thank you for having me on. Beautiful. Thank you. Carol Ann? Hi, I'm Carol Ann Chief with Access to Accessibility. We are a central resource hub for people with disabilities. What we're really doing is trying to offer empowerment. We focus on people with disabilities who are career professionals or entrepreneurs. Uh, I was lucky to know Leslie, and Leslie let me know about this program. So I was lucky to get into that. And border crossings is something everybody with a disability, visible or invisible, has to deal with. So this is a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Okay, hi, I'm Denise, and I work for Dixie Bloor Neighborhood Center. We're a nonprofit agency, and um, we're dedicated basically to providing programs that help meet the needs of newcomers and uh, we're a multicultural service. So we have translators and settlement workers that help um, integrate newcomers into Canadian life and we help with all aspects of their needs, what things might be struggles or challenges to them. I personally am a registered early childhood educator and I work with the LINK program or Care for Newcomer Children program and um, basically, uh, we teach the adults English, and then uh, the childcare teachers are um, supervising the children and teaching the children self-help skills. Um, we give them opportunities to uh, open opportunities to uh, experience art and um, and play, as we know, children learn through play. And um, right now, we have been closed for COVID, but uh, we were able to keep our jobs and um, transfer our um, work to virtual. So we were putting on um, live Zoom circle times for the children, and um, we opened Google Classrooms when we didn't know what that was. <laughs> We had to learn, but we got very good at creating videos and singing songs and teaching the children and giving them an experience to help them through COVID-19, just like we all needed help. And um, that's about it. Hi, I'm Belinda, and I'm with the Mississauga Writers Group. And we are an organization started, I think, in 2012. And this is for people who want to become a writer, who want to put their words on paper or in Word documents and finally end up with something published. And how I got involved was the leader of our group said, somebody from our group should go. <laughs> Do you want to? And I thought, well, I'm way too busy to go. But it, it was such a fabulous opportunity. I'm so glad that I was part of it. It was, it was wonderful. And one of the things is, when you find your voice, you find yourself. And it doesn't matter what it is you use to find your voice, but creativity is one of the things. So it, it was a fabulous opportunity. Thank you. Oh. 
Belinda. No? Yeah, you care? Okay. Uh, I was going to say, Belinda, I think you just gave us the poll quote of the day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Super. Um, okay, so I think, folks, you can hear that there was a diverse representation of organizations serving different communities and different age groups, different community needs, and uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, we're good. Okay, excellent. I can't hear. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, earlier I could hear myself coming back, so this time I don't. Um, okay, so... Um, Thank you so much for being here today with us and being part of this panel. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your own personal experience with this journey of, of creative process as we undertook it together. So I'm curious to know from each of you, uh, maybe Belinda, I can start with you this time because you kind of set the ground for this a little bit, What, um, where you were at in your own relationship to creative process as you were coming into the course and where you feel like you came out of it being. I was struggling with a goal I had set to write a children's book by September 5th of 2021. And I was barely at the beginning and this was in May. I was working with an illustrator and that didn't work out, but he helped me to create my vision. By having to tell him what my vision was, I had to make it so I could see it for myself. And going to each um, course, listening to what Sharoni had put together, each, it, it was like, I didn't know what I was doing, and everything helped me to create a children's book, which I published on October 2nd, and I think without this course, it actually wouldn't have happened, so thank you. And where is that book now, Belinda? <laughs> it's there. Yay. Yes, please. <laughs> Since you got it here, so thank well, you. Thank you. So my daughter at age three said, When can we get a puppy? And her father and I looked at each other and she said the same thing at age four and the same thing at age five. And finally we said, When you're six. <laughs> so before she was six, we said, Let's go look at a puppy. And that was basically the story. But my daughter works with children. And she came home one day and she said, Mom, have you read Pete the Cat? And I said, no. And anyway, I looked up Pete the Cat. Well, there's 95 Pete the Cat books. And I said, OK, now I know what I should do. So I didn't put my kids' names in the book because I don't have 95 stories about my kids. But I can make up stories. And so it's just everything, you know, you hear a little thing from someone, you get encouragement from someone, and you turn it into something. And anyone who wants to do this, you can do it. And if you don't know how, get in contact with me. Self-publishing is totally doable. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. And not just that, but also Belinda, as, as she indicated, or sort of hinted at, did the illustrations herself. So after having initially engaged an illustrator in the conversation, she ended up doing that herself, and they're great, and sort of inspired by Van Gogh's. <laughs> so if you have a chance before you leave today, you should check out her book, it's lovely. Um, Denise, do you want to tell us a little bit about where you were at creatively before and after the program? Okay, so like I said, I work in childcare and with children. So we do creative stuff with the children all the time, and I used to make little, um, little like puppets of the staff and my coworkers and little things to encourage them. And I used to make puppet shows and stuff with our pictures. And everybody used to tell me, oh, you're so creative, Denise, you're so creative. Uh, but I never felt it for myself. You know, those were things I just did because I, I wanted us all to laugh and have fun and ha enjoy being at work. And um, so I never had that confidence or thought of myself as any kind of artist. And also when I entered the border crossings project, I knew that art was a lot of things, but I never really thought of it as, you know, like I, I thought that, um, are, okay, pictures in a gallery is art, and that's 
you know, basically it. And so I thought the little things I do is not art. But um, the border crossings project really opened my eyes to see that art is everywhere. It's in everything. And I really appreciated that uh, we had all the different presenters that you um, introduced to us and that they got to share all of their experiences. And um, I learned and I took something from each of them. So I'm very grateful that um, I had that opportunity because they all shared something different and they all shared a different take on art, a different um, experience, a different way of them expressing themselves through their art and it got me to see the art that I was doing in myself and it also inspired me to try new things with art and I actually did and uh, my co-worker is sitting over there smiling because as soon as I did the first class, I was telling her everything. All of the things you taught me, I told her. <laughs> and um, because I was that excited and that motivated, so I was sharing uh, my experiences, the Border Crossings Project, with my coworkers from that. And then it also helped us to create our own projects. Um, we, we did a presentation for our, we developed and facilitated a workshop for our coworkers based on art and um, art and healing um, through art experiences and it was wonderful and I shared all of our experiences and information with my coworker and helped her with her part of the project but it, it really did help me with mine and our coworkers really experienced something different through that workshop and they themselves experienced some healing and some, the expression and uh, not believing in themselves in the beginning, thinking that, you know, I have this blank canvas in front of me, I'm not an artist, I can't do a picture. And so we, we went through the workshop and they did, and in the end the pictures were all different, even though we had the same materials, but they were all beautiful. And so um, I owe everything to the workshop. Oh, Thank so you, sweet. Border Crossing. And I was going to say, too, I think you sent us an email at one point during the course about being in an ice cream shop or somewhere. I can't remember exactly where you were, but you, you said that your eye had become attuned oh, to Oh, yes. To I went to everything. Dairy Queen. <laughs> and my mom will be very happy that I'm mentioning this because she's 80 and Dairy Queen is like her favorite place to go. <laughs> but actually, I took her to Dairy Queen and we I, it, you know, we go through our day and I don't notice a lot, you know, I buy my stuff and I go home, that's about it. But we went to Dairy Queen and we parked and we were eating our ice cream in the car and I looked up and I noticed um, this rundown building, it's, you could tell it's a very old building, but it had the most beautiful mural on the wall of like a, a lot of different symbols and pictures. And, and for the first time, I really took the time to look at it and admire it for the art and even try to see what the message was from the picture, what I could take from it. And another day, if I didn't attend the workshop, I probably would have just bought my Dairy Queen, ate my ice cream and went home. But this time I took the time to notice the art around me and to really reflect on it. So it has inspired me to have more open eyes to art. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Carol Ann now. Carol Ann, where were you at with your creative process before and then since the Legacy course? Well, actually, I kind of lost my creative process. Uh, 2010, I had brain tumor removed, and it had taken away my long-term memories which also took away a lot of my abilities, if you will. So I used to love art. It took me almost five years to remember that I knew how to read music, uh, seven years to remember that I knew how to crochet. But I really hadn't put time back into doing art. So going through this process, you know, I look at the artwork and I go, oh gosh, am I only making this? But I realized, wait now, I've gotten back and I've touched into things that were a part of my life through expression, 
uh, it was also a way for me to deal with personal emotional things going on. And then all the, the varieties, the different mediums of the artists that you brought in, Sharani. It's like expression is how you want to make it. Could be music, could be word, could be paintings, could be something you share with others. I mean, it's just part of your own process. So it has, it's given me back and I remember doing art and I'm starting to remember how I can do art, remembering how to draw, remembering the process of creativity. So it's given me a lot. And from that, I'm hoping to pass that along uh, to people through a program that not just lets them do art, but maybe even helps them create a career. And especially people with disabilities, everybody looks at their disability, but really their abilities are what can really stand out if given the opportunity. And art is something that a lot of people can use and create a career. And we've seen it with the people today, with entertainment, with words, with pictures. But then this wonderful book, so we know art in any medium can really be a great force and a great healing. So I do thank you so much for getting that to come out of me again. Thank you. I'm glad that you could come back into those parts of yourself, tap back into them. I think that we can, that we can pick up that theme across the conversation in a bit, but May, I want to pick up with you. Where, where were you? Where are you now? Thank you for sharing that, that was beautiful. Um, so I've always like considered myself, I've always loved art, I've always, like ever since I can remember, I've always been, you know, drawing and just kind of coloring, but I've never really felt very comfortable calling myself an artist or like, you know, kind of I guess believing in myself and like being able to like lead activities and within the arts, but just kind of immersing myself in the art world for the last like year and a half, especially during the pandemic, because it's like whatever opportunity's been coming at me, I've just been throwing myself into it. Whether I'm scared of it, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to just, just do things that scare me more these days. And um, just the process of it just really helped me to like not focus so much on the end product and just to enjoy the process. And because I'm also focused on, oh, what is it gonna look like at the end? But it's like, at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. It's the process that gives you all the experiences. It helps you create realizations about yourself. It helps you heal. It helps you explore like your feelings, your emotions. So it's really kind of helped me kind of get on that road of like believing more in myself and just kind of using my gifts to share with others. Like I enjoy seeing people share their gifts with me. So what makes me think that others won't enjoy seeing my own gifts, sharing them, sharing it with them. Here, so, here. Yeah, so that's just kind of my journey at the, at the moment right now. Beautiful, we're all snapping here in the corner for that, yes. <laughs> yeah, in your interview, I was watching a clip of the interview that you did with um, Christina and Daniel before, and in your interview, you talked about um, one of the projects that you've undertaken now at the Newcomer Center Appeal to create an opportunity for women to make time and space in their lives. And I wanted to pick up this theme because I think that between what you were saying in the interview and what Carol Ann has just shared here, and in fact all of you in different ways, but Carol Ann, the sense of coming back to some aspects of yourself, right? I think that in a lot of ways, those of us who don't engage in creative process in a regular or routine kind of way, um, have lost sight of some aspect of our inner child, if you will, without getting too hokey about it, right? But the, that instinct for creative play that we all had when we were young and that maybe has fallen by the wayside or has been rechanneled into other aspects of our lives like problem solving or figuring out how to set a dinner party out or whatever, right? Um, and, uh, and so I wanna come back to this question of what it means to make time and space in your lives for this. What, how, did you, how did you undertake that? Was there any hesitation, any resistance on your part to commit to this intense five-week program? Are you working to make time and space now for yourself more often for creative process or for other people? 
Can you tell us a little bit about that that you want to start off? Yeah, so bef before this, I actually was immersed in a different arts group as well, so um, at the beginning of COVID. So I feel that kind of um, really led me to where I am right now and kind of just uh, being involved and just taking on these opportunities and, um, and just kind of, you know, creating a bit of discipline, if you say, um, something I sometimes struggle with when it comes to things I love and things I'm passionate about. And um, I think it's important to like, you know, create time for play and create time for, um, you know, process and for, you know, making beautiful things. At the end of the day, I just want to make beautiful things. And out of that, just it gives me happiness. And I just want to share that with other people and kind of not really guide them, but just share space with them, which is what I mentioned in the interview, just creating those opportunities for others, just like how it's been created for myself. And can you tell us a little bit about how you've applied that now in your work at Newcomer Center? Um, so in October, we created a four-week project. Uh, we were meeting once uh, a week, and it was called um, Discovering Yourself Through Art. And we're meeting um, every Wednesday night from 7 to 8.30, and we made sure it was a time that was, um, you know, it was good for everyone else to be able to meet at that time. And um, just at the end of the day, just sharing a space to hear people's stories, to hear their experiences, to help them explore, to help them um, just to really just heal together. Because arts at the end of the day, it's a form of expression, and it just helps you kind of learn more about yourself. and. It's just a space to, you know, just heal at the end of the day. And I think one of the things that struck me in particular was an activity that you did about vision boards. Yes. Because I think that a lot of people don't put their own wants and needs forward very yes. well. Don't articulate them or make them visible to themselves. So can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yeah, so the majority of the women in the group actually have never created a vision board. And I know that's something so, I guess, typical. A lot of us maybe have created some, but it, within this group, most of them haven't. So it was really nice to see um, them create their actual um, visions and their goals and putting them actually on paper. And just to encourage them to remind themselves like these are the things that are important to you. And it was nice to, to have, um, have them create and just share space together in, in that process. Thanks, yeah. I think that, that idea of being able to put your own wants and needs forward, yeah. and like I said, like in a way that then is visible to you and marked for you, right? Like I'm gonna jump over here to Belinda for a second, because Belinda, you had a very clear goal when you came in, but did other things open up for you as a result of this program? Yes, things have opened up to me. I'm, I'm getting calls from people who, or email from people who want to know how I did it, can I help them? And I put, a for, I put forward a challenge to my sister who says she wants to write a book. I said, okay, October 25th, 2022, we're each gonna write a book. And since then, I have three more people who have joined the challenge. And I will put it out to everyone here. Anyone who would like to write a book by October 25th, 2022, whatever kind of book it is, if you would like to be part of a group that has put forward that, or has taken on that challenge, let me know, you can join our little group. We're five strong now. Going forward with intent and having an end point, because I had my goal of September 5th. I went to see my mom in July, and I thought, I can't afford to take two weeks off, but she's 95, 96. She just turned up, she'll turn 97 on the 21st. You can't afford to not go. So, but when I got back, it was like I hadn't really left because I went and it was like I just got right back into what I was doing and I kept doing, I had my goal, I knew what I had to do. So if you want to do it, set a goal, know what you want to do and make it happen and you're welcome to come along on our little journey. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. So that's, um, I love that because that's very goal-centered. That's sort of the opposite of the emergent process that we've been talking about. But um, I don't know if you want to think about this for a minute while we turn it to maybe Carol Ann, you can take up this question of where, like what, uh, how, how did you end up making time and space for this when you hadn't been making time and space for this in your own life? And, and what emerged for you? What kinds of ideas emerged as a result of this process? 
Well, what's funny is that I thought first, uh oh, this is this is just too much focusing on me, my want, what I want to do. And I've been on a mission and so focused. Um, a couple of years ago, they did find two new tumors. So I know I'm on a timeline. And I can focus on what I want to do in that time. But I really did forget to also do something for me. And when I first heard about it, I thought, no, no, that's going to take time. That's just a, a self-centered thing. No, no, I could stay focused on where my goal is. But it's funny because it's opened up new community, new friends, and it actually, I guess, helps you if you take time for yourself once in a while. And I, I tell other people to do that, but I was being a hypocrite. I wasn't taking for myself. It's like doing core strengthening exercises, right? Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> me neither, but this is my core strengthening, this kind of creative process, right? To be able to strengthen yourself so that you can go out into the world and be strong with others and for others too, right? That's, that's wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about this vision that's emerged for you and for Mary, your colleague, about what you want to build now? This, this hub, this, uh, like, what are the resources that you're, um, that you're looking for, are there partnership opportunities that you want to invite people into? Is there anything like that that you need? Oh, we need a lot, like everybody, money and volunteers. Um, so sign up I to volunteer at least, maybe to, donate. <laughs> we, with our goal, there are programs we want to do on our own, and programs we want to do in collaboration. And it's funny that the minute some other people hear that, they're like, oh, we'd love to collaborate with you. So for 2022, we're looking at with four different organizations doing collaborations. And a lot of it is bringing, once again, into uh -huh. people with disabilities, like we're put in a box. People make pre-assumptions, especially for those of us who deal with mental health or learning disabilities. We're always told what we can't do or, oh, don't try that. So it's so good to see other organizations who deal with a different community saying, there's going to be people in our community also with disabilities and especially hidden ones. And there's one thing about disabilities is I don't care what age, I don't care your culture, your race, your religion. Every demographic has got people with disabilities. And it's not the 15% or so that you see. There's maybe another 20 or 30% with hidden disabilities. So once again, doing this has connected me with people. And I love connecting with people who are trying to do good. I live by Gandhi's Be the Change You Wish to See in the World. And then in the comment for prayer, there's a line that says, you're asking for forgiveness in all that I've done, but all that I failed to do. And that was drilled into me at an early age. A lot of times what we fail to do can do more harm than even some of the things we do. So failing to connect, failing to share, failing to express. So for me, part of this legacy project has really opened more community, more opportunities. And I pray that it helps people understand and see people with disabilities from a different light. Beautiful, thank you. Um, Denise, instead of asking the same question, I want to turn it over. We only have a few minutes left, and I'd love to hear if any of you want to share some aspect of your own border crossing story. It's come out a little bit in different places in the conversation, but I wonder if we want to make it more explicit. How does, how does the theme of border crossing, or what, what was the border crossing story that you most explored in this program, do you think? 
think for my for myself, I think it was more um, my border crossing is my self confidence, or you know that part of you that says you you're not good enough, you can't do that, or you know that's impossible for you. Just stay with what you already know. That's and and I've been known at work not to like new things or change. <laughs> I tend to grumble a lot and then I catch on and I like it afterwards. And um, so I, that has been something that has been brought to my, to my uh, attention. I've noticed that about myself. And um, I'll tell you, I, I have been very busy and I am very tired at home. Uh, but when I heard of the border crossings um, workshop, uh, I, it was offered to me, and at first, um, you know, it's like, oh, it's another workshop, I'll do it, you know. But I found that I didn't mind giving up my time in the evening, and some of them were evening workshops. Uh, you know, I was very tired. <laughs> but I was excited and even willing, and I wanted to attend them because each day brought something new. And they were very motivational to me, very inspiring. At a time, you know, when it was COVID and everyone was at home and I was wondering if I'm gonna have a job tomorrow, you know, it wasn't, I, I was really in a depression, I think, when the, when the workshop started. And I didn't even realize it because I was cut off from my friends at work and my coworkers and the children that we teach. It was virtual, but not in person so it's a very different feeling and I was really missing that and um, when I started attending the border crossings the, after the first class I was hooked and motivated and so I didn't mind doing the modules before because you put so much information to like uh, you introduced us to so many art projects all over the world that I had never heard about and I'm not one to go to a lot of galleries. I haven't, you know, been seen a lot of different artists other than what you see on TV, the, the famous ones, you know. Um, so I was so happy to learn about those projects. And like the presenters, I learned something different from all of them. So for me, my border crossing was really, you know, not letting those walls stop me from, from you know, getting my goals done or achieving anything new or trying something new even. Yeah, or to do what May does now, right? Face things with fear and do it anyway. <laughs> yes, <laughs> figure feel, it out. Feel the fear and do it anyway, they yeah, say, right? figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Okay. Fear it out is not the phrase next. Nice. <laughs> but I kind of relate to that. Like, my, for, for me personally, like the border crossings that I've kind of uh, crossed throughout this journey, uh, I feel is just allowing myself to embrace being an artist and being called an artist and being able to share my gifts with people and the community and wherever that journey takes me i'm i'm happy to do that so beautiful. that's the that's it sorry beautiful <laughs> yes it's not been happening it back here again <laughs> and belinda can we hear from you a little bit about your border crossing i think my big border crossing in the whole creative part of my life was Number one, creating a habit. When the kids were little, my husband brought home an old laptop. And when I saw it, I said, why did you buy that? But I sat down at the kitchen table after I put the kids to bed, and I started to write. And every night I wrote down what time I started, what time I finished, how many words I wrote. And I felt like a success if I could write down 702 to 715 and I only wrote like 15 words because I could still look at my my uh, journal and I had an entry and 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 so that starting that habit now the kids are all grown up now and and uh, I've moved it so I get up in the morning and I write and now I paint in the evening but a habit has to start somewhere and if you think you're going to do anything with just discipline You'll start off well, be it exercise, be it art, be it writing, but you need something more like a habit if you're going to keep going. So creating the habit is what I think the, the biggest thing in my life. 
I'd already created the habit by the time I came to border crossings, but I still wasn't comfortable with putting myself out there. So I have published a novel, so I put myself out there in written word, but putting my illustrations out there was another big thing. So that was another border to cross. And seeing other people's work and everyone's encouragement and what everyone else is doing, you start to think, well, yeah, I, I, I can do it too. And it doesn't matter so much how it's received. You Once you do something, you think, well, okay, I can do it again and I can do it better if I've done it once. But if you haven't at least put it out there, you, you're kind of still waiting. So that's what I've got out of it. I'm waiting for the talk show of Life Lessons with Belinda, right? <laughs> so that's my blog. So good. Two days a week. You can, you can catch up on Life Lessons with Belinda on her blog. <laughs> Amazing. Caroline, will you finish us here? Tell us a little bit about your border crossing. You've, you've alluded to it in different ways already with your brain tumors. Yeah, I've gone through a lot of border crossings, whether physical, emotional, uh, whether it's journeys coming from Newfoundland, Anybody here who doesn't know Newfoundland, it's an island. Just like Hawaii is an island, but instead of white beaches, we've got lots of white snow. So coming up to Ontario, I think one of my biggest border crossings had to be literally when I physically lost my voice. And they had told me I'd have a trachea and a feeding tube for life and I'd stay in you. You know, I warned the doctors before and they go, well, look at me. Do I look like a woman who's gonna live on a feeding tube? <laughs> and as for going mute, I said, you know what? No, I've been told to shut up many times in my life. <laughs> but no, being mute is not something that's in my future. It wasn't for the while. And through blessings of an experimental thing at St. Mike's, uh, I'm on my fifth insert that allows me to physically have a voice back. So there had been somebody who was loud and was an activist and out there a lot. And after the surgeries, and I thought, my voice is physically gone. Can I still be a voice in society, make a change, do something? And broke down that border, and I have a voice again, and I'm using it, hopefully, to help others. Absolutely. Thank you. What a note to end on. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for sharing your voice and for stepping forward out of your comfort zones in different ways and uh, being part of the project, being part of this panel today. It is just such a such a delight to hear from all of you and to see all of you shining and you know just all of this energy radiating from your stories. Um, thank you. And I hope that those of you who are listening today um, and Maybe, like I said, I know, I think looking around this room, I think pretty much everybody is already art making in some way, right? But um, if you're at home and maybe sitting there with, you know, a pile of old paints or something or, or eggshells, I don't know, um, <laughs> or old paints and eggshells, maybe together, um, maybe you'll find an opportunity to just start playing and see what kind of self-expression comes forward and, and how to center yourselves in your own lives in a really powerful way, because I hear that over and over from all of you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Anto, I'm going to turn it back over to you.